in the Queen City of the Washita, Camden, Arkansas. Come on now and join us as we go into the worship service. Our scripture comes from Psalm 51. Have mercy for me, O God, according to my loving kindness, according unto the multitude of the tenderest mercy, blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. I acknowledge my transgression and my sins forever before me. Against thee only have I sinned and done this evil in sight. Thou might be unjustified when thou speakest, be me clear, thou judges. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and sin did my mother's conceive me. Behold, thy desert through the inward part and the hidden part, thou shalt make me wisdom. I read you Psalm 51, first five verses. Lord, what God have already been blessed. Eternal God, our lovely Heavenly Father. Oh, yeah. Father in heaven, we come before your throne of grace one more time and oh, say yeah. thank you for another good day. Thank you. Thank Father, you. thank you for everything. You've been yeah. so good and kind to us. Uh -huh. Father, we come and say thank you for your darling son yeah. that went to that rugged cross and bled out his life and died oh, yeah. and rose on that third day morning. Uh -huh. Father, thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you. you woke thank us you. up to see thank another brand new day we've never seen before and never oh, yeah. seen again. Father, thank you for a reasonable portion of your health and strength. Thank you, Father, thank, thank you for you. everything. You protect us or guide oh, yeah. us as we went to and fro. Oh, yeah. Father, thank you for all our family, all our yeah. friends, all our neighbors. Oh, yeah. Father, thank you for a good church family. Thank you. Father, thank help you. all the churches stand over in your name. Uh -huh. And Father, thank you for a good pastor that yeah. you're planning here to lead us. Thank you for a good associate pastor oh, yeah. and all of their wives and all our members. Yeah. Thank you for everything, oh Lord. Yeah. Help people all over this world. Please, Father, yeah. as we come today, we had another mass shooting around yeah. this land and country. Oh, Father, yeah. let touch the people's heart and let them know we all brothers oh, and yeah. sisters. Let yeah, them Lord. turn from their sin from wicked ways and uh, come and ask what can they be do to be saved. Yeah. Father, thank you for letting our church be back together. Yeah, Help all of the exactly. ones that want to come and have the desire to come. Oh, yeah. but yeah. medical reason might be keeping them away. Yeah. But I just help people all over this world have yeah. that love to run from heart to heart. In Jesus' yeah. name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. God has been truly good to us, and we're going to give him thanks this morning. Amen? All right. Oh, yes.
Good morning. Good morning. Pastor Franklin, Sister Franklin, Reverend Smith, Sister Smith, church congregation, good morning. It's good to see you this morning. Our announcements for today. Our thoughts, excuse me, to Pastor Franklin and wife and Greater St. Paul Baptist Church and members. Our thoughts. Our thanks to you with warmest thanks, grateful hearts, and a deep appreciation for your thoughtfulness. Thank you all, Maddie Finks and Darwin family. I would like to thank you all for joining us this morning. I pray that each and every one of you will have a wonderful day. And I pray that something said or done today will help us all. In the name of Jesus, these are our announcements for today. Thank you. Yes, come on, sis. Coming is it's coming. We are we're celebrating a special day today, so we're going to turn our attention now to uh, Sister Cummins for the occasion uh, for this morning. Good morning, Good morning. Pastor Franklin, Reverend Smith. <clears throat> Um, I was told to, uh, or asked to do the occasion about two or three weeks ago, and I agreed to do it. And I've been away out of town and couldn't wait to come to church this morning and come in the side door. And, and Deborah says, when you do the occasion, would you? And I go, what occasion? What? Reverend Franklin, I know you know what I'm talking about. I, I go, what occasion? What's today? So, here we go. <clears throat> Dr. Ira Dunn, many years ago, um, was very much into the young people of the church. And one of the things that he did was help the children along the way uh, in furthering their education financially. So there was an Ira Dunn Scholarship Fund established. And we move forward to Dr. Smith. What he wanted was not only to set up a way to contribute money to help the kids, but also to set up a way for us to remember who wanted this, who started this, who encouraged this from the very beginning. So it was Dr. Smith's idea to set up a memorial scholarship fund in Reverend Dunn's name. So that's how we got the Dr. Ira Dunn Memorial Scholarship. And then as years go by and we, the Ada Rogers Circle, worked along with Reverend Smith to increase the money. We come up with the idea of doing a rally. And what we would do, the circle would ask members to take on a state. And by representing that state, an amount of money would be submitted and each state contributed and the fund would grow once more. So we had the state rally for the Dr. Ira Dunn Scholarship Fund. And as years passed, not too many years ago, the Ada Rogers Circle established an endowment 
And by establishing the endowment, it became the Dr. Ira Dunn Scholarship and Dr. Georgie Smith Endowment Scholarship Fund. So here we are today. Uh, each year we have a rally, and each year each member will take on a state to represent and make contributions either by themselves or they would ask someone, could you help me with this state by contributing some money for my state? And we were, years ago, all the way into, I would say, COVID, we were represented by all 50 states. Each representative would march in and take its place here. This morning, uh, we're going to ask that each member that's represented in a state would stand, and each member that has an envelope with your contribution to contribute, you would turn that envelope in at the time that we do uh, our morning offering. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is a fundraiser for our church. It's a very important fundraiser for our church because we have children that are going to grow up, finish high school, and go on to college. And once they take that pursuit on, we want to be able to contribute financially to help those students. So we do that through our scholarship fund. So this morning, we're going to ask that along with your offering, your tithes, whatever you contribute to the church, you also contribute to the Dr. R. Dunn George E. Smith Endowment Scholarship Fund. Thank you. Franklin, Brother Smith, officers and Christian friends, and loving members of our dear brothers and sisters who have transitioned in 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022. Blessed are the dead that who dies in the Lord, that they may uh, rest from their labor and their work to follow them. Revelation 14 and 13. And as I call the names of your loved ones, you may come and light a candle if you wish. And our first name is Brother Marvin Williams. Sister Mildred McKinney.
Brother Alfred White. Brother Eric McRae. Sister Mildred Turner. Sister Grady Welch. Lester, Lester, Lessie Lester. Grady Moore, Sister Geneva Braggs. Deacon Gary Owens. Deacon Henry Bow.
Sister Ruby Walford. Sister DeSandra Strickland. Deacon Theotis Rogers. Claudia Utzi. Reverend Power Don. Brother George Smith. Thank you. God bless you. Let the church say amen. amen. Now as we prepare to worship God and the offering, let me pause to ask all of those that are wearing these banners if you will be kind to stand with us representing a state will you be kind to stand and lift your envelope in the air and let me pray God we pray you bless these special gifts that they be used for kingdom building work here on earth we ask it in Jesus name amen as you remain standing here Amen. Amen. Oh, there, Dr. Dunn. Amen. God bless you. Will you all stand with us? Our officers come now. It's time we worship God by the presentation of our tithe and offering. We learn in the word of God that it is more blessed to give than to receive. Will you say amen? amen. And that God loves a, a cheerful giver. Our officers have come. We pray now that you will follow the direction of the ushers from the rear.
before we ask the blessing for this offering, there was an oversight. Certainly it was not intended, uh, but Brother James Pace was not on the list. And so we want to pray for the Pace family. If there are any family members here, please charge it to our heads and not our hearts. We certainly grieve uh, with that family and his passing. That's great. Father, bless this offering, bless those that gave, bless those that did not have but still desired to give. And as you pray, man, thank God.
trying to be where you are. Thank you, Lord. Love is where you are. Joy is who you are. Peace is where you are. Happiness is who you are. Joy is where you are. And I gotta be where you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wanna be where you are. Thank you, Lord. Gotta be where you are. I wanna be where you are. I gotta be where you are. Just send up a worship right now. Sometimes you just want to see if we're serious. Sometimes you just want to see if we're just not all about the talk. If we're about the do. Just send up a worship right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we love you, Jesus. We thank you for all you have done for us, Lord God. Yay! Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh God, we might not see it, but we thank you for what you're about to do, Lord. Hallelujah, God. God, we thank you, God, for all your blessings, God. Let them all go right now in the name of Jesus. service, preaching the grace of God, amen, the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are thankful for this state rally program, the scholarship fund, and to salute all of the graduates, any that may be here and those that may be joining us by way of the social media. 
we're honored and thankful to have in our presence Sister June Rogers, who come, I'm sure, to show memorial. Amen for her late husband, Deacon Ben Rogers. And I asked Sister Rogers as soon as I could get to her if she would mind just blessing us with song service while she's here. And she said she would agree. Amen as the Lord leads. And so come on, let's give her a great big hand clap, Sister Rogers, to add to this song ministry. It's a blessing to be here, be in the presence of the Lord. Praise team, you're on target, you're on target. Today, when Pastor Franklin came to me, he said, you going to do something? I said, if you want me to, I will. But my favorite is my soul's been anchored because he is the one that's going to carry me through whatever I go through. And he's had me and I'm going to give him all the glory that I can give him. Though the storms keep on raging in my life And sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day Still the hope that lies within is reassured as I lift my eyes above the distant shore I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared and if the storms don't cease and if the winds keep on blowing in my life my storms keep on raging in my life and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day still the hope that lies within is reassured as I lift my eyes above the distant shore, I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. And if, if the storm
Rivers may roll, breakers may dash. I shall not stray. I know He holds me fast. So are the days, clouds dim the sky. I know it's all right. Jesus is not for you to all that have participated in song service thank you about preacher sister smith thank god for you to the ushers who labor in our midst we praise god and thank god for you we pray together for sister finks uh, her hour of agreement Sister Christopher and others that are dealing with bereavement, we pray together with you. I purposed to wear black today in solidarity with those 10 people, 10 families in Buffalo who are dealing with grief because of senseless violence and to all of those um, who have a similar puzzlement that Habaka has this morning. I want to read and I'm going to rush. We have, you don't get much more spiritual than the service we have already had. Amen. Come on, say amen, somebody. We are thankful for all of our visitors that are here this morning and to all my father's children. Uh, would you help me say amen for Sister Franklin? Amen. amen. We are in Habakkuk chapter 1, and I will definitely need your prayers. Habakkuk chapter 1, we'll read the first few verses there beginning at verse 1, 
the burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. Oh Lord, how long shall I cry? And thou will not hear. Even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save. Why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me, and there are that rise up strife and contention. Therefore the law is slacked, and judgment doth never go forth, for the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Therefore wrong judgment proceedeth. I want to emphasize that portion of verse 1 that, that says the burden which the prophet did see. And I want to use for a sermon title this morning, What Habakkuk Sees. I want to talk about what Habakkuk sees. For the sake of clarity, I want to read those four verses again from the, um, the contemporary English version. These words I record. I am Habakkuk the prophet. And this is the message that the Lord gave me. Yeah. Oh Lord, how long must I beg for your help before you listen? How long before you save us from all this violence? Why do you make me watch such terrible injustice? Why do you allow violence, lawlessness, crime, and cruelty to spread everywhere. Laws cannot be enforced. Justice is always the losers. Criminals crowd out honest people and twist the law around. I want to talk about what Habakkuk sees. Habakkuk the prophet. I need your prayers, um, church, um, because we're trying to reach beyond just church members. As with preaching, one of the goals is always to reach the lost. And it's going to be extremely difficult to try to reach out to the lost by talking about Habakkuk. Habakkuk. Habakkuk, there, there are no, nobody in my family's name is Habakkuk. None of my siblings, I, I don't have any cousins named Habakkuk. Um, to the best of my knowledge, I never went to school with anybody named Habakkuk. I don't know any. Habakkuk's. I, I, know, I know some people with biblical character names. I don't know anybody named Habakkuk. My second oldest brother that passed and going on to be with the Lord, his middle name is Ephraim. And that's kind of biblical, but I don't know anybody named Habakkuk. And so it's going to be hard to reach people who are not Bible scholars or Bible students by talking about Habakkuk. Um, most people know a David. There are folks that know not only a David, but know about the Bible David. There are folks that know about the Bible David that don't even go to church. Everybody can relate to a David. A lot of people know the Bible story about David. Never sat on a pew, but know that David whipped Goliath that day. They know about David, but, but they don't know about Habakkuk. It's going to be hard. I need your prayers. Help me pray and help me preach about Habakkuk. He presents to us and for us a significant 
prophecy. The book opens by saying that what the Lord showed him, he saw. Talk about what Habakkuk sees. Habakkuk writes during the period after King Josiah. Josiah was one of the good kings of Judah. He, he came to the throne as a young man. And, and Josiah, after being there on the throne a short time, came in contact with the word of God and began to have the word of God read and explained to the palace and to the people. And uh, Josiah began a hunger for the word of God. And the word of God led Josiah to have a spiritual revival all over Judah. And as a result of that spiritual revival, people were drawn close to God. And Josiah had a powerful reign, a, a godly reign. And the people were elevated spiritually. And then came the time when Habakkuk, uh, Josiah was, was no more. He was the last of the good kings of Judah. Then following Josiah, there was Jehoahaz. Then Jehoiakim. These were wicked and evil kings who brought nothing but disintegration and deterioration and degradation and desolation to the land of Judah. They were the ones that led the people in idolatry. And, and, and here after Josiah had brought the people up so high, they would... They would they were dropped again back into worldly and wicked ways. So Habakkuk writes, Habakkuk receives a vision from the Lord and he writes concerning the impending invasion of the Chaldeans. The problem is not just the enemies of Judah. We know that Nebuchadnezzar would invade the southern kingdom and would destroy them, but the real problem wasn't just the enemies of the people. The real problem was in the people themselves. Uh, God, my brothers and sisters, God's people grew increasingly ungodly. Does that sound familiar to you? I, I know it's not happening so much here in uh, in Camden, Arkansas, I know that, but, but in places like New York, you can't even go grocery shopping on an afternoon, a sunny afternoon, because ungodliness is uh, roaming and roaming the land, and you never know who's going to be the next fool walking around with military-grade weapons attacking unarmed and defenseless people. So Habakkuk says, how long? How long, God? How long shall I cry? And you act like you don't hear me. You've been there before, haven't you? We, we've suddenly have read it in the Bible before. We've heard this before. How long? How long shall the wicked prosper? How long shall the ungodly be exalted? God, how long? How long will the wicked triumph? That's what's recorded in Psalm 94 and 3. Listen uh, to Asap in Psalm 73, the leader of David's choir. He writes in Psalm 73 and 2, My feet were almost gone. My steps had well slipped. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. I saw their pride, saw their arrogance, I saw their violence and corruption. I, I saw their boasting and their greed. In that 73rd Psalm from verses 2 to 16, the psalmist cries and complains, God, how long? Where are you, God? What are you doing, God? Don't you see how the wicked are prospering? How they're perverting your land? Don't you see how they're victimizing your people? God, 
How long? Anybody ever cried? Cried that to God? God, how long? How long must I suffer? How long, amen, must I be downtrodden? How long? God, where are you? You ever prayed that? I need you now. I need, I need you now. God, where are you? You said all I had to do was call and you would answer. And God, I've been calling you and I can't see you nowhere. God, how long? Anybody ever been there? God, what are you doing? Why don't you do something? Why don't you? Why don't you? Why don't you stop this? I can only imagine. The brokenness of those 10 families in New York this morning. I can only imagine what they must be dealing with, what they must be going through. And imagine like the psalmist, like a backer, I can imagine them saying, God, how long? Have you ever been there? God, how long? And this, my brothers and sisters, is not in the text. I think sometimes God is telling us, look in the mirror and ask how long. While you're complaining to me, while you're telling me to do something about it, look in the mirror. And ask the mirror how long. How, how long? With the people who claim to be my people are lukewarm. How long? How long are the people who claim to be my people, who claim to claim my name, will refuse to humble themselves and pray? God said, while you're saying so long, look in the mirror and ask that fella in the mirror, how long? This 73rd Psalm, the psalmist cries out, for 17 verses, or 16 verses. But then when he gets to seven, verse 17, look what it says. He says, until I went into the sanctuary of God. I was asking God, how long you're going to let the wicked reign? How long you're going to let evil people have their way? How long? You're going to prosper the drug dealers and you're going to prosper the gang bangers and you're going to prosper the, pros prosper the prostitutes. How long are you going to give them all the money? Well, I work 60 hours a week and barely able to keep groceries on the table. I complained how long ago until I went into the sanctuary. When I went into the sanctuary of God, when I got in the presence of the Lord, I found out that while I'm looking at the story in the middle, God already sees the end. I have no right to ask God how long. Chapter 2, my brothers and sisters, after Habakkuk makes this petition to God, for God has allowed Habakkuk to see the judgment that's coming upon Judah. The judgment, how that uh, the army would invade them and, and how they would be overthrown. Got in my mind, my brothers and sisters, a picture of Judah when I look on the news networks today and see what's happening in Ukraine. I, I have on my mind that must have been how it felt to be in Judah when there was bigger armies than you can fight invading your land when bombs are falling all around you. There's nothing you can do about it. That reminds me, my brothers and sisters, how Judah must have felt. Nebuchadnezzar and the Chaldeans rushed in and, and they had horses that were bigger, faster, and stronger. They had soldiers that had weapons. And Judah had nothing. Uh, in chapter 1, Habakkuk makes his petition to God. But then in chapter 2, uh, the Lord begins to answer. And I want to encourage somebody as I rush to close here this morning, my brother, my sister, keep talking with the Lord. 
because I declare he will answer. Oh, there's an old church saying that he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. I wish I, wish I had a witness in here. Keep talking to God. Keep telling God all about it. Keep trusting God. I declare that God still makes a way out of no way. In chapter one, Habakkuk complains, but in chapter two, my brothers and sisters, the Lord answers. And as, I, as a result of hearing God's answer, look what Habakkuk said. Habakkuk said, I will stand my watch. I heard to leave you this morning my brothers and sisters, but I learned from Habakkuk. When I see what Habakkuk sees, look what Habakkuk said, I will stand my watch. Uh, my brothers and sisters, we are told not just to pray, but to watch and pray. Have I got a witness this morning? That's what happened when the disciples were with Jesus and Jesus took Peter, James, and John and said, come with me, we're going a little further. And they got to the Garden of Gethsemane and Jesus said, stay here, watch and pray. For the business of the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And my brothers and sisters, if we were busy ourselves with the kingdom of heaven, sometimes we have to watch and pray. I wish I had a witness in him. Uh, as, as Habakkuk prays and as he takes his stand on the wall, then the Spirit of the Lord said to Habakkuk, write the vision and make it plain. For the vision is for an appointed time. At the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. I'm closing. When I tell you, my brothers and sisters, what Habakkuk sees, notice very briefly, he notice, he notices something to God about God that makes him change his mind. And you would see in closing the practice of the prophet. Uh, he begins to not only pray, not only complain, but he begins to watch. He opens his eyes and he begins to see and seek spiritual things. Habakkuk the prophet now begins to watch and pray. But notice also the patience of the prophet. For in verse 3, the text says that Habakkuk says that though it tarry, I will wait for it. And I want you to know this morning, my brothers and sisters, sometimes you just have to be still and wait for God. God's time is not your time. Your failure to prepare does not necessitate an emergency on God's behalf. Because you got yourself under something that you can't handle don't mean that God has to hurry. Sometimes you're just going to have to stand and wait on the Lord. Have I got a witness here? That's what Isaiah said. He said, wait upon the Lord. Uh, and not only do we see the patience, but there is the pageantry. We learn uh, from Habakkuk that the just shall live by faith. That's all I'm done this morning. But I want you to know, my brothers and my sisters, I want you to know that God is still on the throne. Have I got a witness here? I want to reassure somebody today that God is still in control. Are you praying with me? I, I, I want to tell somebody that when the bottom comes out, God is still a sure foundation. Yes, and it 
does not matter what it looks like now. I heard her back saying, although the fig shall not blossom, and neither shall there be fruit in the vine. Are you praying this morning? I heard him say, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields, yeah, Lord, shall yield no fear of me. Pray with me on. I heard the back of saying, the flock shall be cut off from the fold. Yeah, Lord. And then I heard him say, with all of these things, yet will I rejoice in the joy of the Lord. And I'm going to leave you today when I tell you, just like a backer, I've learned this morning that the Lord is my strength. When I'm weak, He picks me up. When I'm weary, He lifts me up. When I stumble, He guides my feet. The Lord, oh the Lord, is my strength. Y'all ain't praying with me. Yeah, I see now what the back of sees. I see now what the back of sees. He saw the same thing that Elijah saw when he was out in the field and on a hill in Second King chapter six. The Bible says Elisha had gone to sleep and his enemies had gathered themselves all around the hill. You hear what I'm saying? And when the morning came, the servant of Elisha looked down the hill and he said, man of God, wake up for our enemies all around. I wish I had a witness here and Elijah I can see him in my spiritual imaginative and imaginary mind I can see Elijah saying oh. what you want Man of God, they're all around. They're coming to get us. Oh, oh that was a good dream. Boy, don't you know whose side you on? <laughs> don't you know that we're not here because we've been so strong or because we've been so good? Or because we've been so mighty, don't you know? Elisha said, Lord, open his eyes so he can see that they that are for us. Come on, help me close this morning. Tell somebody they that are for us. Anybody here, child of God? If you are a child of God, tap yourself on the shoulder and remind yourself, say, they that are for us are more than they that are against us. If the Lord is on your side, you and God create a multitude and a vast majority. I see. I see what Habakkuk sees. I know my brothers and sisters, it looks dark now. But I want you to see what Habakkuk sees. He looks by faith. Come on, stand with me all over the sanctuary. He looks at the situation. And I would have you know this morning that, that this is the beginning of when it's going to get dark. When Habakkuk looks out and when he prophesizes, 
they're just getting ready to go into captivity but Habakkuk sees something he sees that whatever they're going through is what God has allowed and if God allow you to it God will bring you through it come on somebody shout that in the air say God I know if you lead me to it you bring me through it I want to see like Habakkuk sees Habakkuk see we got some difficult days ahead trouble is all around you I wish that I could give you comfort and consolation my brothers and sisters but when I looked at the news last night this one thing lingered in my mind what that young man did in New York there's thousands millions of them in this country with more weapons than he had and you don't know where they are you don't know who they are but they're, they're waiting they're, they're waiting to attack and it's not said that we won't be the next community where crazy violence occurs we, we won't be the next church where people who just want to worship and to study God's words gets gunned down I wish I could guarantee you that won't happen but, but, but I can tell you that even if it does yet will I praise the name of the Lord no harm can come upon me that God can see me through one of these days my brothers and sisters when all this trouble is all over God has prepared for us a place in glory God has purchased for us a place in glory and God has purposed for us a place in glory I want to say to you this morning I know Reverend Smith usually do it but I want you to come now officers I want to say to you here this morning if you are in this service if you are here and you don't know Jesus in the free pardon of sin I'm not worried about how many verses you memorize how much how many commentaries you have I'm talking about if you don't have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus while the blood runs warm in your veins I want to tell you we're pausing now to invite you to come accept Jesus Christ the son of the living God how do I do that first of all you do it by confessing that you have some sin you have some stuff in your life that you need to get rid of some stuff that costs more than you are able to pay so first you do it by confessing your sins and then you believe that Jesus is the son of the living God that he died for our sins that's what Calvary was all about. They stretched him wide and hung him high. And he died on Calvary's cross that we might be saved. If you can do that and you're here today, you can receive the gift of eternal life. The doors of the church are open. The invitation is yours. You can come. Believe on Jesus. Are you here? You want to rededicate your life? Church home, the doors are open. I will trust in the Lord. Oh, 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 trust, oh, yes, in the Lord. Oh, I'll trust in the Lord till I die. Gonna stay on the battlefield. Oh, I'm gonna stay on the battlefield. I'm gonna stay on the battlefield until I die. Oh, oh, I'm gonna stay on the 
Amen. Thank you. Our heads are bowed together. We're ready to go down from this place again. We are thankful for everyone that makes up this assembly. We pray the grace of God upon you that you have heard something that has blessed you, made you see more clearly our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thankful for everybody that participated in this service. June, as always, we thank God for you. Thank you for the song service. To our own Sister Lewis, Brother Lewis, thank you so much for the music service, to all the makeup ministry. We're ready now to go down from this place, God. We pray that the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts has been pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Oh God, now as we prepare to go down from this holy place, we pray that you dismiss us from this service, but never from your presence. For now may the grace of God, the love of our Lord and Savior, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may it rest, rule, and abide here now and forevermore. Let every heart say amen. God bless you and may he keep you.